Look who's here. How are you? <laughs> yes, excited. I guess I feel the same. <sighs> well, did you want something in particular, or are you just looking for some company? <laughs> You're right. But on the other hand, do you have to be a mummy in order to dedicate yourself to archaeology? The Starlings. I have been fascinated by them since I was a child. You must know, their technology is so powerful that if they wanted to, they could probably conquer the entire civilized world with it. But they don't. And why? Because they all share the same dream instead. Exactly. A place without war or hunger, where all are born eat. And for some reason, this thought has fascinated me as much as the Starlings themselves do. Call it a fantasy, but if there is such a place, if it really is like the old legends, we'd be able to learn so much from the ancient fathers. And, well, there it is, the answer to your question. I suppose that this naive hope is the reason for my interest in the Star People's culture. Well, that is a good question. I guess we'll have to wait until we find one. Anyway, let us continue our conversation at a later time, shall we? I want to enjoy the night sky. Who knows how many more chances we will have. forgotten city in the clouds and I'm part of it that just sounds surreal <sighs> but anyway it's good that you're here I wanted to talk to you do you have a second <laughs> you have a point there I how should I put it I wanted to thank you I'm not sure if you know it but all that's happened since I plucked you out of that thicket on the Sun Coast it did something to me I think I've understood something, as corny as it may sound. <sighs> it's hard to put into words. You know, I, I still believe what I told you that time we met at the Dancing Nomad. That we all act as we do because we hope it makes us happy. But somehow, in no small part thanks to my father, I've always considered responsibility and being happy to be contradictory. But actually, that's wrong. It's the exact opposite. In order to be truly content, we need connection to a person, to a cause, to anything. If you never find that, you'll never find yourself. Yeah, yeah, I said that. And I still think it's true to an extent. You're on your own if you want to be. I'm responsible for what happened to Adila and to Lysia because I never wanted to be responsible. Sounds strange, doesn't it? But I can't change what happened. I'll just have to live with that. Maybe. Maybe not. In the end, I can only speak for myself. The fact is, though, that it... I don't know, that, that it feels like I owe this world to be right here, right now. As part of something... momentous. And I like how that feels. That surprises me. No matter how all this ends, I will have no regrets. The same goes for our friendship. That's what I wanted to tell you. Despite all the trouble we got ourselves into, I'm glad that our paths crossed. For whatever reason they did. Thanks. But anyway, enough of this sentimental babble for now. You should probably rest a little. Who knows what awaits us up there.
Short answer? <laughs> We're screwed. With this fanatical madman in front of our gates, our time's running out. And all these possessed people on the streets don't exactly make it better. We have to ignite the beacon, and we have to do it fast. Else... <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Just skip the small talk. I was never good at that. I wanted to see you because there's something I need to show you. Follow me. I couldn't sleep, so I used the chance to take a look around. The thought that Kermine did this all by himself... It's incredible. It would take dozens of Andrellian craftsmen at least five years to do this. Yeah, but just bear with me. You'll be surprised. Ready to go in? Good. Kurmai told me about this place. This sphere is what keeps us in the air, and it draws its energy from the water. Crystal water, that's what he called it. I just had to see it for myself. Beautiful, don't you think? I absolutely agree. You... He just can't believe it! No! He just can't believe it! Oh, damn. No, quickly, run! Should 
to it. Now, wait a second. What part of vertical didn't you understand? He thinks his instructions were clear. Stay here. Do nothing. But no. You decide to run around the ship and open whatever door crosses your path. And no. Don't look at him like that. Next time, there will be consequences. Well, mm, okay. Yes. Son, I just can't believe it. Here we are, on a mission to save mankind, and instead of sharpening our weapons and talking gloomily, we play hide and seek like two little kids who just stole an apple from their neighbor. That's just bizarre, isn't it? No, it hasn't. Uh, anyway, I guess we're safe down here, at least for a while. Actually, I don't mind. This place, it makes me feel... serene. Let's you forget why we're here. Do I? In a good or bad way? That's good to hear. You know, Saira, I've been thinking. About what happened in the castle, and the talk we had after that. Well, do you remember when I said that I should maybe just give up and accept that I'll never be able to fully control that thing inside me? You told me that I might be right. That I should maybe just stop trying to control it. Because that only made it stronger in a way. At first, that made me really angry. It just sounded heartless, even though I know you didn't mean it that way. But then I thought about it and realized there's truth to that. You know, all my life, I've tried to kill that part of me, because it made me feel despicable. And every time I failed, I hated myself for it, and thought that I was just too weak. But that was the wrong way to look at it from the very start. This thing, the only way to truly kill it, would be to kill myself. And I can't and won't do that. Not now, when there's so much at stake, nor in the future if there is one. No, I won't let it harm anyone ever again. But I'll accept that it's a part of me. You know, Saira, what good did all the self-loathing ever do? I've been dealt a tough hand, and with that thing and these urges inside of me, I'll never be like the others. I think that's the best, maybe the only way to deal with something like this. Accept it, as despicable as it may be, because it is part of who you are. Do you understand what I mean? I'm not deluding myself. Living with this thing will be something I have to wrestle with for the rest of my life. There will always be moments of weakness when it will try to get the best of me. But I will always resist. And I will do so without condemning myself every time it happens. And in the meantime, I will live. I will do all the things that I never allowed myself to do. Build friendships, go see the world, and go dancing. Even if the latter would be a rather amusing sight. Yes. And that. It does, yes. And it surprises me just how much. I'm not sure if I could have gotten here without you. Your friendship. It means a lot to me. And I hope we'll find this Numinos in the Forgotten City, because there are still so many things I want to do after all this is over. <sighs> Kurmai should be gone by now, so I think it's safe to go upstairs without him noticing you. For a while, yes. 
As I said, I like this place. And I need some time to sort through my thoughts. You will. just haven't seen us yet. The clouds, that's it. Or the city is deserted. Looks like it to me. Nonsense! Now quiet! He needs to concentrate! Ah, there you are. I was just about to wake you. <laughs> we came across the first of these floating buildings about three hours ago. The Valley of a Thousand Clouds. That's what the Starlings called it. But as you've noticed, it's a little too, well, quiet. No, not at all. But who knows? Maybe it's as the Starling says, and we'll be surprised. Correct, yes. The Nexus Tower. <sighs> By Malthus, it's a pity we don't have the time to explore this place more thoroughly. Just imagine how much history is hidden in each one of these stones. It's incredible. Maybe we can come back here one day, once we've stopped the cleansing. He was at first, yes. But he's grown more distant the closer we've gotten. Let's just hope for the best. Well... First of all, let us take a look at it up close, then we'll see. <sighs> hmm. And still, no one. That must mean something, right? He will find them. He will find them, and they will Hey, hey wait! <sighs> By the righteous path, that's not good at all. Come on, we have to follow him. seen anything so beautiful beautiful but deserted 
So maybe the ancient fathers of the Starlings don't exist after all? Let's not jump to conclusions, shall we? Somebody must have built this place, and somehow the maps which led us here have ended up in the hands of the Starlings. Ancient fathers or not, whoever was capable of creating something like this must also have known things. Let's just wait and see. Jimon, he is here, and he has found you, just as your prophecy foretold. Now open the gates! Why don't you answer? Open the gates! Oh my, I sense drama. By the stars! Why do you punish him with silence? He found you, he fulfilled your prophecy, so let him inside! No, 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 oh no, 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 this isn't happening. This, this isn't happening. Come on. Yes. Yes, he is here. He is sorry, Magistra. It was a mistake to come here. This place is dead, and the ancient fathers died with it. Very poetic, pal, but now you're overdoing it. Who says they're dead? Maybe your ancient fathers just... Mm, left. For someplace else. Yes. I'm sure they did. <sighs> Look, I am sorry this place isn't what you had hoped it would be. I really am. But Dalveric is right. You shouldn't jump to conclusions. And despair won't help you either. We should inspect this place before deciding anything. Don't you agree? The only question is, how to get inside? Hmm. We could try breaking this gate open. Splendid idea, boy. Do you have a battering ram with you? Myrid-sized, preferably? <sighs> this place must have a side entrance. Kermai? Yes, probably. Well, then let's go look for it. We split up. Sister Sakarish. You accompany Kermai and take a closer look at the area around the docks. Legion and I will examine the eastern part of the city. And you, you and Delveric scout the west. If anyone finds anything, call the rest of the group before doing anything else. Now off you go. Well, I'd say that went differently than expected. But all tragedy aside, <sighs> this place must be the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Come on, you go ahead. I'll be right behind you.
Hey, over here. That looks like a side entrance to me. Come, let's go get the others. Good. That looks exactly like what we needed. Anything we should know about the interior, Kermai? Traps? No. Hmm. Well then. Legion and Sister Sikarish, you stay and guard the ship. If we haven't returned, or if you haven't heard from us within 12 hours, you're to take the ship back to Ark. Understood? Uh, understood. Then let's be off. Let's see... Hmm... This is Starling's script, but it's... different. Blazes. Can you take a look at that, Kermai? <sighs> of course. Uh, uh, he sees. 
That's very... Uh, all right, yes. These are directions. To the left is the Shurai, which roughly means workshop. The right corridor leads to the living quarters. He thinks the Shurai will lead us to the top of the main tower. Good. Then left we go. I suppose this is where the council held their meetings, isn't it, Kermai? Wait, where is he? Hmm? He... What the heck? He was here a second ago. Ah, <sighs> wonderful. We need to find him. Let's split up. We'll meet up again here.
true, but why does this pal just run off like that? That's just plain stupid. I couldn't agree more, but at least now we have a trail. Let's see if the lever still works. Let's see where that leads. Take a look around. He must have gone somewhere. By the wise hermit. What is this place, Magistra? Can you read the glyphs? I'll try. Yes, that? Hmm. Tower of Memories. That should be it. Good question. They look like energy sources, don't they? The same as the Pyreans used. And that power, it's immense. Let me read some more. Blazes, this is tricky, but by Malthus, yes! Yes? We got lucky. The prophet was right. This is an archive. The archive, to be precise. The gathered memories of the ancient starlings. They don't seem to have memorized a lot, then. We will see about that. Come. Now no. <coughs> So, 
Magistra. I'm guessing a word of warning would have killed the drama. One moment. Ah, here. Okay. The Starling prophecies were right. The ancient fathers have lived in this place for eras, maybe eons. And throughout the years, they have documented the rise and fall of every civilization. And we're just about to see their memories of the Pyrians. Correct. And they witnessed all of it. Their creation, their bloom, and their downfall. The same goes for many, many cultures that were before them. Well, that's the big question, isn't it? But I fear we have no time to wonder about that, at least not for the moment. Correct. And yet, they never helped any of the civilizations that were extinguished by it. Who knows? Maybe their hands were tied somehow. Don't jump to conclusions. Have you ever wondered where the plans for the beacon came from? As Arenthiel said, its technology shares a lot of similarities with Kermai's starship. So maybe they did do something after all. But that's just speculation. What we do know is that neither the Red Madness, the High Ones, nor the Cleansing could harm them, and that their knowledge might be the key to completing the beacon. Look at that! Welcome to the memories of the Ancient Fathers. Let's see what we can learn from it. If the Grand Master was right about this, the Pyrian history should perfectly reflect the different phases of the cycle, including the cleansing. The sixth step. The cycle concludes, the cleansing happens, and mankind vanishes, just like that. Do you see this temple in the background? This must be the temple in the city of a thousand floods, the heart of the Pyrian realm. The second step of the cycle, just as the Grandmaster said, a first civilization arises, blossoms, and falls. For us, it was Asadaron's reign of the Eterna, which collapsed after Starfall. Who knows what it was in the age of the Pyrians? That's... let me see... hmm... yes, this is the creation of a theocracy. After the first civilization falls, a second one arises. That is reigned over by a few who proclaim themselves gods. Do you see the hats? These were the sun priests of the Pyrian realm, the equivalent of our Lightborn. That's step number four. Downfall of the rulers. For us, it was the Shadow God and Rathsol Renthiel who killed the Lightborn. In the Pyrian Age, it was this general, Jakal. He was a member of one of the reigning castes himself, but one day he turned against them. He was the Pyrian Shadow God and the Pyrian Terranor Korak all in one, so to speak. The chaos, the war, the red madness. This is the fifth step, where we are right now. Do you see this shape in the background? This must be the High Ones, who are behind all of it. The cycle nears its end. the first step of the cycle. Out of nothing, life forms itself, and from that life, man evolves and starts populating the Earth. <sighs> and after the sixth step, it all starts over. So this is the final proof. 
everything that has happened to the Pyrians, and probably to those before them, too, is now happening to us. That's the question, but... By the gods. What? Mankind. It ascends to the sky. To the high ones. Oh, by the righteous path, I... Now it finally makes sense. All of it. <sighs> Mankind doesn't vanish at the end of a cycle. It becomes a high one. That is how they reproduce, how they feed, or whatever you wish to call it. Don't you see? These shapes that ascend skywards. Their thoughts, our consciousness, our souls, and all of them together form a new High One. So you're saying what a High One really is, is the consciousness of an entire civilization? Yes, it's our memories, our thoughts, our dark knowledge. Our collective consciousness. This, this is monstrous. Yes, yes, by the righteous path, that's it. Korak is right. In a way, humanity does reach a new level of existence because it becomes one of those beasts. Oh, yes, we do. The word of the dead. You said the aged man left it for you, didn't you? Then this is the way. The Numinos. I know what it is. Or rather, what we need to fill it with. The essence of a high one. It's hard to explain. The problem with the high ones is that they don't have a physical shape. And this makes it hard to fight them. They are everywhere, and nowhere, just like the air. This is why we need the beacon to fight it. It has the power to banish them. <sighs> it's an assumption, but a well-grounded one. What the beacon does is channel massive amounts of energy and unleash it on its core. Isn't it logical, then, that we need something of what we want to banish? like an energy signature inside it. It might sound far-fetched to you, but it feels right. You're correct. It is not. But I don't see that we have any alternatives. Do you? Well, this is where it gets complicated, but I think I also have an answer to that. The word of the dead. We need to use it on a high one to enter its mind. If there is any place we can find a high one's essence, it is there. Well, that's peachy. Now all we have to do is find a high one who allows us to use the word of the dead on him. Should be an easy task, considering that they've already been so cooperative. That is correct. But I know where to find one. Where the last cleansing took place, that is where we need to go. And once we are there, you need to listen to the Echo. Of course, you can see what happened back then. Correct. The Echo grants you the ability to feel and relive the memories of this world. But since the High Ones are immaterial and will not reveal themselves to us when we want them to, all we can do is travel back to a point where they did. The last cleansing, where the Pyreans became one of them. Yes, this means that we have to find the holy city of the Pyreans, where the last cleansing took place, the city of floods. Yes, but we just learned that devouring us is what allows the High Ones to create a new one of their own. In other words, death is what a High One consists of. It's a giant, sentient, and ethereal corpse in a way. If the word of the dead doesn't work on them, it shouldn't work on anything. At least, that is one way to see it. Let us hope I'm right. 
Well, I hope this place can help us find the answer. If the ancient starlings witnessed the entire cycle of the Pyreans, then they surely knew a lot about the geography of the world as it was back then as well. We need to keep searching. Come, let us go back to the tower. Entities are reproduced by devouring the consciousness of an entire civilization. If I didn't know that all this was actually happening, I'd say that someone had had one drink too many. It just sounds so bizarre. Is it? Don't we ourselves breed pigs so that we may eat them once they are fat enough? In a way, the high ones are just like us, except that it's our thoughts that they are after rather than our bodies. It bears a certain kind of logic. You cannot deny that. Oh, yes, totally. <laughs> you know what's kind of funny about all this? Knowing that Korak's story about mankind descending isn't as stupid as it first sounded. We don't cease to exist, no. We live happily ever after, united into a high one. That's almost consoling. Yes, but is this new high one really us? Or does it just need us to come forth? Yes, we know now that this is how they reproduce. But we still know far too little. How did they come into being? How long has this been going on? So many questions. Indeed. But how does the saying go? First kill the predator, then ponder its motivations. You're a man of great wisdom, my Sir Delveric. Well then, let's see what... Come on. They are here! They have been here all along! Kermai! Where by the righteous path were you? He was a fool to bring you here! You soil-born are too dangerous! You've always been! But he was too blinded! Blinded by his dream to finally finish her and sail home! I don't like this, Magistra. What are you talking about, Kermai? The fact that the ancient starlings left this city doesn't have anything to do with us. Stop you talking! Darn it, you are so ignorant! They are here, but they won't reveal themselves to us because they don't accept your presence! Because you are unworthy of them! He rationalizes? What do you take him for? A fool! If you would just listen for once in your life, you'd hear them. They're everywhere. He will prove his worth to them. He will show that he deserves to live among them. The soil born have to die, and then the fathers will reveal themselves. But how? They will understand. To arms. to be done. Find the map and leave. But... No!
That was all of them, I think. That leaves us with the question of what the heck happened up there. The poor Magistra, she... She didn't deserve that. Yeah, that makes sense. But what now? We need that map to find the City of a Thousand Floods, or whatever they call it. Uh, and getting out of this place alive wouldn't be too bad either. You're right, we do. That means back by the dock. Come on, let's get back to the elevator. After we were back in Enderall again to have his breakdown? As if this mission wasn't already complicated enough. Hmm. That looks good. Let's hope it also leads us down to the tower. Seems like the ancient starlings were as peaceful as they were made out to be after all. What kind of utopia needs these kinds of killing machines around?
doesn't look good. Well, I suppose this flying steelbird got them. Very heroic, but that would be suicide. At least as long as that alarm is still active. In other words, we need to find a way to switch it off. <laughs> Question of the century. But my first guess would be somewhere within the tower itself. We... The Shurii. Kamai said it meant something like workshop. That sounds like the best place to go right now. Come on, let's go back inside. 